Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Diane Desiel and today a little sewing video. I'm going to show you how to assemble the little camisole for babies. And as you might know, I did put the pattern available in my Etsy boutique. This is the little cam baby camisole that I'm showing you how to do the assembling today. I think it's the easiest garment that I've never assembled. Of course, it should be done in a stretchy fabric. And if you've been to my Etsy boutique lately, you might have seen that I'm now offering the pattern graded in, I think, uh, 3 to 24 months, so baby size. Now let's see how we assemble it. So like I said, this is the garment that I use to create a pattern. And this is my first sample. The first one I did was a knit fabric that looks very much like a tight ribbing. So I had no problem at all for the band at the bottom and at the neck. The result was pretty good. But when I did try the assembling with the main piece in a little thicker fabric, it's still a stretchy fabric, but thicker and stiffer fabric, the neck and the bottom piece ribbing here it didn't fall pretty good so I did them much narrower right now what you use to assemble is the same width as was what you have left and the result is pretty good the reason why I'm talking about those little pieces is that usually in the market it's not the way they're assembling it they're using the bias folder and they sew what we call like a collarette or a, bi a stretch bias now in the pattern and in this video I'm going to show you how to assemble the finishing neck and bottom with those little pieces or those little pattern pieces that I did because I know it's not everyone that has the bias folder. So this is going to be one way of doing it or doing the finishing and I'm of course going to show you the other way using the bias folder attachment. If you do have it, it's much faster, it looks more professional just like the one that you get in the store. For the one that it's the first time they hear about that bias folder, here what it is, it's three piece, not very expensive, like $20 maybe. And if you want to hear more about it, I did a video, so look in my channel, I did a video exclusively talking about this folder. I'm going to start right away with the easiest one, the, the, so the bias folder. I'm not showing you how to install it here, but I'm going to show you from the beginning, you will see how to put it inside and how with a pin you could pull it all the way until it comes out. Then you just pull it straight for a little while and then towards the back. You make sure that both folds are done and before to start in your actual garment, just take a little scrap piece and do your test to see if everything is okay. Now to cut this little piece, it should be uh, like a thin ribbing. The measurement is going to depend on what's written on your folder. Mine was saying 34 millimeter. So when you do stretch, you always cut one or two millimeter wider. Here for 34 millimeter, I cut 36. And the length for sure you don't do it exactly what you need, but it could be in piece. You need about 10 centimeter at the beginning and maybe 10 centimeter at the end if you do them separately. If you do them all in one shot, just make it a little longer so you're not in trouble. Now the second technique, the one where you have, at least if you're about my pattern, you have four little pieces like that. They're all different. You have the front neck, back neck, and you have front bottom and the back bottom. Both back piece, you'll see that you have double notch. And while you're looking at the notch, I want to specify that knit fabric should be sewn with overlock four thread. That is usually a seam of seven millimeter or just a little more than quarter inch. 
So your notches should not be longer than half of that seam allowance. So here, pretty much three, three and a half millimeter or one eight. The first step is going to be for all four pieces, take them and fold them in the middle lengthwise like that, wrong side with wrong side. And you're going to do a little stay stitch on the open side at maybe one millimeter or two, stay stitch all along. And when you do it, don't hesitate to pull a tiny little bit on your fabric to like elongate the edge because the ribbing piece are a little shorter than where you're going to sew them. Here I hope you could see that my piece curve a bit. Just like I said, the contour or the open side where we did the stay stitch stretch a bit so it'll just be easier for you to assemble it with your main piece. By the way, to recognize your four pieces, you'll notice that the neck pieces, they have an angle on both sides, while the bottom part, they're straight. Now we could assemble with the main piece, so from one side to the center, following the notches, and from the middle to the other side. You could do the overlock right away. Now you could see the result of the little ribbing piece. The little stretch that you give when you do your stay stitch to hold the two layers together, it's stretching and now it's very easy to assemble with your, your fabric. The only thing with this technique is that usually that small piece has a tendency to fall back down like that. So to hold it down, I suggest that you do a tiny little stop stitch is going to give you something like that. Now, when your finishing is finished, that you use the little ribbing piece or you did with the bias folder, it's the same thing. The rest of the assembling is exactly the same. You're going to find which one is the back, which one is the front. The front is the shortest one. Place your back the right side up and then the front over also right side up. In the armhole on both back and front you're going to see a notch. This is the shoulder notch and you're going to place the front one over the back one. Align your armhole together just like that, the edge together and you're going to do a tiny stay stitch just to hold them together. Maybe at to three millimeter or one eight, just to hold them together. And you're going to do exactly the same thing front over your back, same thing on the other side. Now we're ready to sew the sleeve. So I take my sleeve on my pattern. I do have a double notch on the back side and I have a middle notch that match the position of the shoulder notch that I had on both pieces, and I overlap here. So I'm going to place my back over my back. I'm going to start on one side, go all the way to the middle notch and then continue matching my double notch on the back all the way to the other underarm. And I will do that with both of my sleeve. So I did sew my sleeve for both of my camisole. The only difference is for this one, I did create a little rose with the leftover bias that was naturally stretched on the contour. So I just turn it. I stitch it together from behind and you saw me stitching it over 
on the machine. The next step is going to be to overlock both sleeve hem. Then after that, you're going to fold it right side with right side and we'll assemble both side seam from the leg opening all the way to the M of your sleeve. Now I'm going to make a little precision in case you don't remember. When you do sew your side seam at the underarm point, remember to send the seam allowance in one direction and the other one in the other direction. This way you have a nice corner and you eliminate some layers. Now we're going to turn it on the right side. And it's time to do the hem, the sleeve hem. Here again, remember to send the seam allowance in one direction and over the notch in the other direction. So when you flip it, you avoid thickness. You start at the underarm point and you go all around sewing your hem. You do the hem on both sleeves, of course. Then you're going to do a little tack at the bottom of the opening here. Send the seam allowance in one direction. And from the top over the rib, you just do a little tuck. This way for sure it's not going to unsew. It's also going to keep the seam allowance hiding and in one direction. That's it, we're done, except for the three little snap that you will put at the inseam. I used to put these ones that are usually two little circle and two different parts for the inside of the snap. Pretty easy to put with this little tool and a hammer. But since they're pretty hard to find right now, anyway for me, I bought these ones and I thought it was a, a cool new thing. They're all in plastic. So I bought them and for this one you absolutely need to buy also the tools to put them on. It's pretty easy to use. So I tried them on my sample and here's the result. I find them a little bigger or a little too big for babies. And also uh, it attracts more the attention because it's a full circle instead of just a little round. I think these snap would be good for woven fabric but for stretch fabric I didn't like them that much because they're easy to close but they're pretty hard to open and I'm scared because it's stretchy fabric that it just come out. So I think they're a little too tight, a little too hard to undo. So that's it. After your snaps are done, your camisole is ready. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching and I see you next time.